Welcome back to the Fermentation Adventure. This week, we are diving into the world of pickles. We are making fermented dill pickles two different ways. We are making traditional half sours and making spicy half sours. Let's get into it. Whoa, baby. <clears throat> Just think, this boring Woo. little cucumber we turned into a beautiful sour pickle and a light you on fire pickle. Ah, oh, delicious. Amazing what fermentation can do. I can't even describe it. It's just so good. My tongue is on the fire. That's good. Join us on this journey to explore the world of fermentation. If you'd like to learn how to make ferments like these, start now by clicking subscribe and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. Let's talk about pickles for a second. I mean, what do you think about when you hear the word pickles? So there's a difference between fermentation and pickling. So with fermentation, what we're doing today is the traditional way where you're making your own vinegar, which I guess could also mm -hmm. be acetic acid, lactic acid. And when you're pickling something, you're actually adding vinegar and adding salt. But we are doing it the traditional way and making pickles with just sea salt. That's it. And I love that because fermentation is actually so good for you. And there's all kinds of you know probiotics and all kinds of benefits of eating a food that's still alive. And when people talk about pickling and they're using like canned method, things like that, it really just kills everything that's in there. You're actually going through like the boiling process and you gotta make sure to can it right. And boy, that actually seems so much more complicated than just letting it sit on the counter and it's like ready in four days. It's amazing. I think the taste is even better with traditional fermented pickles. Absolutely. These are going to be so good. You will love this. It is our traditional recipe that we use all the time and we're constantly making pickles of some kind. Now one interesting thing is there's a lot of people that try to start with fermenting dill pickles and that's not necessarily the easiest ferment to start with because there can be a lot of problems. You'd be surprised. So while it seems so simple, the acidity, the saltiness, uh, and really who wants a soft dill pickle, right? You've got to get a crunchy one. So that takes us to our first ingredient, which is cucumbers. You want to start off with the correct cucumber. You might see the ones that are a little bit longer and they're shiny. You'd make those for sandwiches and just slicing up. But if you're fermenting these, you don't want them to get soft. So you need to start off with a very firm cucumber. And these are the Boston pickling cukes. Now, since we are making one quart jars today, we are going to need about one pound per quart. And it turns out that that ends up being about four of these little cucumbers. First, we gotta wash these up. Since we just wash them in regular tap water, we wanna also make sure we kinda dry them off a little bit because that is chlorinated water that's right on these cucumbers. Like with all of our ferments, you don't wanna use chlorinated water, mm -hmm. but we rinse it off. It's not that big of a deal. We've never had a problem as long as we dry them off and get all of that off of there. Simply slice off both ends. Usually what happens with these cucumbers is when they start getting soft, it usually starts with the blossom end. So we're just gonna take that right off. So that's another tip for a crunchy pickle is to get rid of those blossom ends. The recipe that we're making right now is for our traditional traditional fermented half sour dill pickle. Whew, say that fast five times. You can make a half sour or a full sour. We'll get into that in a little bit, but just keep that in mind. The next ingredient that we need is garlic. Really pretty one that has a little bit of purple on it. On our recipe, we love four cloves of garlic. If you don't like garlic so much, you can use less. If you like it more than we do, you can use more. Slice off the ends and then smash them. Now you want to smash them to make sure you get all of that flavor out. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. And that's why it's so good to smash it. It releases all of that good flavor. I mean, the oils even start to come out of it. Not only that, when you smash it, the skins come off just easily. Yeah. No problem. It's a, it's a plus. Compost. <laughs> Man, this is going to be really good food for our papayas. What else do we have growing? Bananas. And our pineapple. The pineapple. The pineapple that we've been talking about for a long time, it's still growing. Look how big this is. Oh my gosh, it's so big. I think we're about ready to cut it soon because it's so yellow. Can't wait to pick that thing. I think we're gonna eat that and also make our famous tapache. Everybody's been loving that, it's so good. Can you imagine tapache with our homegrown pineapple? I think that would oh. be pretty flavorful. There's one 
other main ingredient that really helps with the flavor of dill pickles, and that is onions. onions. For a one quart jar, we're gonna use a quarter of an onion. I'm just gonna slice the end off, and once I get it into a quarter, I'm actually gonna slice it as thinly as possible because you wanna be able to fit inside the jar around all those cucumbers. Oh my gosh. This is why I don't cut onions. It always gets to me. And I, I think she needs some goggles. Oh my gosh. They never seem to affect me at all. How does that not get you? I like to put all the spices in the bottom of the jar first is so that they don't just float at the top and potentially gather mold or a calm yeast layer or whatever weirdness is going to happen, you know? I like to keep it right there at the bottom. When you put all those cucumbers inside, it's going to hold everything in, so nothing's going to float to the top. We're going to jam pack this jar. You'll see. It'll be packed. So our next ingredient is dill. And we're using dried dill. We're going to use a half a tablespoon of the dried dill and put it right into the bottom of this jar. You can definitely use fresh dill if you want to. Just use double the amount of fresh. Oh yeah, you're making dill pickles, so you definitely need some dill. And I always like to use the bulk spices. For one, it saves a lot of money. And two, you don't run out when you really need something. <laughs> We like to use mustard seed. So we're gonna use one teaspoon of dried mustard seed. I think it adds just a little bit of spiciness to it. Just kind of like a Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of flavor. The next ingredient is celery seed. Now we haven't always used this, but we find that it adds just a little bit extra flavor. If you put this in here with the celery seed, it'll give it a little bit of like an earthy type flavor. So it's pretty good, but you can definitely leave it out. We are going to put one-fourth of a teaspoon of the celery seed. And these are tiny little seeds. Oh, you can smell. It's like earthy oh, and yeah. mm, Very, celery. Like herby. The next ingredient is peppercorns. Now, we've used full peppercorns before, but we just don't feel that it makes much of a difference. They don't really leach out any of the flavor. It stays very hard and solid. It's so, just a little mild, I guess. And also, usually after we make pickles, we like to use the pickle juice, and we like to use all of it, the seeds and all, but the peppercorns are a little bit hard for us. So, our trick is we like to use the peppercorns ground, and we're just gonna do like a splash. I'm not really gonna measure it out too much. It's just maybe an eighth teaspoon, maybe. Yeah, just a handful of twists. Whew, a little bit of a cloud going on here. I think uh, it's very possible we might sneeze. So now that we have all of our spices, we are going to start packing this jar. What we like to start with, though, is the garlic. And the same thing goes for the onions, except we're going to put some of them on the bottom, and then we're going to put the cucumbers in, and then a little bit throughout. If you want to just put them at the bottom and be done with it, you can. Now that we have our aromatics and our spices in there, we want to get these cucumbers into the jar. If you have a bigger jar, you can definitely leave them whole. Now the trick that we like to do is to simply slice them in half lengthwise. Ooh, look at that beautiful color. Now you can definitely slice these more into spears if you want to, but the smaller that you slice them, the more likely they're gonna go soft. So the more whole you can keep them, the firmer they're gonna be and the more crispy the pickle that you're gonna get. That's another tip. So here comes the Tetris part. It's easiest to do this with the jar kind of on its side. That way the cucumber pieces don't keep falling over. And just try and get it to fit in there. Sometimes you have to move them around a little bit, get in a squeeze in there, and then when you go to put the last piece, you might have to actually cut off a little bit extra to get it to fit in there. Just be careful not to squeeze it in too tightly. You don't want to break the jar and you also don't want to squish all the cucumbers. It fit! Depending on the size of your cucumbers, it will make a huge difference. You'll either need more to fit the jar, or you'll need only like three cucumbers. It depends. But now we do have some of our onion slices left that we're going to kind of squish in there in between and on top. We have the final ingredient, and that is our salt water, or our salt. So since we're making pickles the old-fashioned way, using a salt brine, the reason that we're using the salt is it creates an environment where all of the beneficial bacteria grow and all the bad bacteria, they kind of just kind of die away. But you don't need any type of special salt like pickling salt. You just need salt. So it's really up to you per taste. But we like to use typically our two teaspoons of salt to one cup of water. That's the ratio that we seem to like best. Using our natural sea salt. Because it has a lot more minerals than just regular table salt. Let's add some water. Non-chlorinated, of course. We have it filtered here with our fridge. Now we just gotta get this to dissolve a little bit. 
you'd actually be surprised of how little water we need to fill this jar because most of it is filled with cucumbers. You want to fill the jar to right around the brim line or just a little below. Don't forget, we're going to put a weight in there to weigh this down. We don't want any kind of mold. So the more we can keep everything below the brine, the better. So now that we have our salt brine in the jar, one thing we really like to do when we're packing our jar so tight is we like to screw on a cap to shake it up so we can get a lot of the flavor all throughout. But make sure that it is a leak proof lid. We actually just recently got these. They are so cool because we always used to have a problem with leaking. They're just the ball brand and they're leak proof. So you just put that on there and give it a good shake. You're going to see the onions and the dill and everything is just going to go everywhere and that's exactly what we want. Bum, bum. We have these really nice glass fermentation weights that work really well. They have this nice little handle on top too. So you can see that we put the weight on top and we might need a little bit more water. There's a little bit of a gap there. So we're going to mix up a little bit more salt water so it comes right up to the top. It almost covers the weight but definitely comes up to the side of the weight. The last thing is to cover it. Now you could just cover this with a cloth, but what we like to do is to put these silicone fermentation lids on top. And these are really cool. We've been using these. If you've watched some of our other videos, we often use these as well and we've talked about them. But they have a little like a release hole at the top. So as the gases are pushing up out of the jar, there's no oxygen going into it. And oxygen helps create mold and that's what we don't want. No, no so mold. We could take a little ring and then just screw it right on top and then we are good to go. So now we have our traditional half sour dill pickles almost ready. We're going to set these aside. We are going to make the spicy ones next. So for the spicy pickles, we are almost making the same thing. So let us walk you through that same recipe, but then we have an additional ingredient, which is the spice and it's spicy. And for these spicy pickles, we need about four cucumbers, which is about one pound. We need four cloves of garlic and also one fourth of an onion sliced, half a tablespoon of dried dill, one teaspoon of mustard seed, one fourth teaspoon of celery seed, and also a splash of the peppercorn ground. Our salt brine, two teaspoons of salt to one cup of water. Non-chlorinated water. But now, because we want it to be really spicy, we are adding the next ingredient, and that is peppers, hot peppers. Now this could be any kinds of peppers. We're going to be using four serrano peppers. Depending on how spicy you like things, you might want to use only one or two and check it out. See how you like it. Also, we run a little bit of a test before we actually use the pepper. So we'll kind of try a little piece of it and see just how spicy it is. Because sometimes it's supposed to be a spicy pepper and it just isn't. You just never know. So these we're just going to slice the top off and then we're just going to quarter them. Now one thing I will mention, you probably wouldn't be wearing gloves, which I'm not wearing gloves today, so I might pay for it later, just like gonna rub my eyes. Now if you notice on these serrano peppers, there's a white pith right there, and then there's also all of these seeds. That's where a lot of the spiciness is. So if you don't want it so spicy, you can cut this pith out. I love spicy things, I can't yes. help it. Yes, peppers do. are so good. You have all these extra little holes now in between each of the cucumbers, so you're gonna take each of these little quarters and just squeeze them right down in there, down the sides, down the middles, anywhere you can, all in between the cucumbers. If you're having trouble fitting the peppers in there, you can always put the rest of them right on top. And I am washing my hands right now because I'm really nervous about all the hot pepper juices on my fingers. Whatever you do, don't rub your eyes after you cut hot peppers, you'll be sorry. We need the next ingredient, which is the salt brine. Two teaspoons of salt to one cup of water. We're going to give it a good shake. So let's see if we need a little more water. Ooh, Ooh it perfect. looks perfect. Better give this a different color. We're going to go with blue. Okay. Ta -da! All right. Beautiful. You know what that means. And how long should they sit on the counter during this fermentation process? For us, we like three days. If you extend that out to five, six days, that will be a full sour. Half sour for us is three days. So we're going to take these through the fermentation process and show you what to expect. 
After 24 hours, we're seeing some good signs that fermentation is happening. The garlic is starting to turn blue in the jar, which could either be a sign that acid is being created or that the sulfur in the garlic is reacting to metals in the water, but it's totally normal. There are also a few bubbles starting to show, especially in the spicy dill pickle jar. There they are. After 48 hours, the brine is starting to look partially cloudy and the cucumbers are taking on a little bit of a yellow color. There are still bubbles appearing and collecting at the top. The spicy pickles are also looking cloudy, which is also a good sign. After three full days, it's a bit cloudier and the color is yellowed even more. There are quite a few bubbles being released during fermentation and they're getting trapped here and there. Moving the mason jar releases those bubbles. So cool. And we now have a side-by-side -side comparison for you. Fresh batch, and we also have the one that's been fermenting for three and a half days. I mean, look at the difference in color. Mm, that's crazy. It's so different. This one's bold and vibrant. This one, you can definitely tell it has been fermenting. It's a little bit cloudy. What we want is you want to see bubbles right away, and you want it to kind of slow down, and then you know it's about done. For a half sour, it still has bubbles in it, which is good. If it's totally done, then it, it might start getting a little bit too tangy and then going full sour on you. Exactly, this is a half sour. And let's look inside and we haven't really looked at the top oh, yet. True. It has not been exposed to air, so we shouldn't have any mold or any calm yeast. Wow. Perfectly clear on top. Still see a little bit of bubbles. It's very normal to have a lot of the spices like the dill and stuff float to the top and it kind of sticks around the edge. That's normal for it to clump up there. That's not a problem. You can stir it back in, you can just leave it, or you can take it out. It doesn't matter. The flavor's already there. Now we're ready to try it? Yep. Oh my gosh. Look at that beautiful pickle. It smells so good too. You can smell the dill. Okay, let's see if there's still some crisp to this. Moment of truth. Oh yeah. The outside mm -hmm. is still very crispy. Mmm. Whoa. Wow. That's so crunchy. Ugh. Oh. That is delicious. It definitely has that sour flavor. That's exactly how I love a pickle. Say if you're using these cucumbers and they still turn out soft, there's a couple things that you can try. You can add some bay leaves or you can add um, grape leaves. So really all you need is some kind of tannin in there. If you have tannins in there, it'll keep the cucumbers crispy. If you wanted this a little bit saltier, instead use a half a tablespoon. So it's just that little bit extra salt. Should we try the spicy ones oh now? Oh boy. It's perfect. It looks wonderful. Oh, you can smell the spice. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can. Oh boy. You ready? These look perfect. I think they're gonna taste really good. It's just a matter of how spicy does four serrano peppers make a traditional half sour dill pickle? That is the question. I don't even think I'm just gonna, you know, give it a little taste. I'm just gonna pop it in my mouth I'm and gonna see what little, happens. I'm gonna give it a little taste. I just put my tongue to it. I didn't do anything else. Ah! That's a little spicy, guys. <clears throat> oh, whoa. Don't touch your eyes. <laughs> I think I prefer one serrano. <laughs> That is good. It's so good. If you want spicy, add four serrano. Actually, that's not I bad. Like it. It's really not bad. Mm -hmm. I just ate the whole thing. The serrano pepper does have a good flavor to it. And I'm sure it jalapenos, does. green jalapenos, red jalapenos, they'll probably mm -hmm. be the same too. I'm happy with those. You know, I think those are the spiciest pickles we have ever made. We so. But that's not all. We have a surprise for you. We have some pickles that are from one year ago. We're going to do a taste test. On top of that, we're going to compare these to our watermelon pickle. We get the question all the time, how long will these pickled peppers and yeah. uh, well, whatever Dug it pickles, is. How long will they question, stay crunchy? How long? Will they stay good? Will they still taste good? Well, let's check out our one year old pickles right now. So here we have dill pickles and they were half sours that we made exactly one year ago. To truly compare one of the ones we just made, look at the difference. Oh yeah. So over time, it's going to lose its color a little bit. This is definitely still crispy. Let's try this. Another moment of truth. One so they, year old pickles. What do they taste like? Mild. Mild. Definitely mild. It's lost it's, a little flavor. The skin that really maintains the crispiness and it's still completely crispy. From yeah, the, very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Even after mm -hmm. one year. I would recommend using it before mm -hmm. maybe six months. Mm -hmm. After that, it becomes just kind of more mild. And if you're really looking for that 
pickle flavor and so much of that dill, you know, you get that more at the beginning, you know, when it's more fresh. It's amazing how long this extends the shelf life. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine you have this cucumber sitting on the counter. This thing will be long gone and you'll still have this cucumber in a jar as a pickle for years. It's, it's amazing. A, right. Watermelon pickles. Here we come. Now these are freshly made. Curious if it really does taste like a freshly made pickle. Yep. Yeah. Amazing. That is just incredible. <laughs> if you want something that you can almost be guaranteed that it's going to be crunchy and crispy, mm -hmm. definitely go with the watermelon rind pickle. Now if you don't know what watermelon rind pickles are, check this video out. We made these not that long ago and they are pretty awesome. We hope you've liked this recipe and diving into pickles with us. If you like this video, give us a like. Be sure to subscribe and share this with your friends. We appreciate every one of you. Now get out there and create some culture. Start off with the correct pickle. Like I said, that could be- Cucumber. A... <laughs>